If you want to go even faster and remain safe, modern thinking suggests you have to do away with rails and wheels altogether. In Japan, this experimental train with wings works on the same principle as a piece of paper dropping to the floor. It's kept afloat by a cushion of air. The aero train has no brakes. It has to use a parachute to stop. Even more ingenious, researchers are developing trains known as maglevs that also skim above their tracks, this time suspended on a cushion of magnetism. In 1999, an experimental maglev in Japan sped to 552 kilometers an hour, breaking the passenger train world record previously held by the TGV. Magnetic levitation was first developed in the 1960s by British inventor Professor Eric Lathwaite. This is a linear motive, and that's just a fancy name for a row of electromagnets. This is a sheet of aluminium. When I put it on the motor and switch on the magnets, something pretty dramatic occurs. If I try and put it back now, you see I can hold it with finger and thumb because it tries to float. But it isn't stable sideways. If I get it a bit off centre, it tends to fly off. Let it go, and there you have propulsion without physical contact. Like Lathwaite's linear motor, the maglev track contains a row of powerful electromagnets that create enough upward force on magnets in the train to lift it into the air. And that when switched on in rapid succession, provide enough horizontal force to propel it forward. To brake, the magnetic field is simply reversed and magnetic forces act on the train in the opposite direction. Today, a prototype in Emsland, Germany, carries passengers around a 30 km test track at super high speeds. Maglevs don't need to tilt. The track is already steeply banked to 12 degrees to accommodate high speed bends. There is no motor on the train, it's in the track, making the maglev far lighter than normal trains and even though it consumes a third less power, its acceleration is four times better than the TGVs. And with no wheels touching the track, friction is minimal. There is no danger of rail fatigue or wheel failure and the train can reach astonishing speeds. People often ask, uh, what is the maximum speed possible for a maglev train? Today, it would be possible to, to maintain uh, higher speeds of about 600, 700 kilometers per hour. Germany is famous in the world for engineering capacities, but I think even in other countries, uh, it would have been possible to build up or develop a system like this. Maglev technology already has truly international appeal. The German design is on a fast track to China, the world's first commercial maglev between Shanghai and its airport, reducing the journey time from 45 to 8 minutes. The system is expected to carry 10 million passengers, rising to a predicted 20 million by 2010. If it proves a success, China plans to build a massive intercity network of 435 km an hour maglev trains to ease the burden on its overcrowded transport system. For the future of maglev technology, the sky is quite literally the limit. In America, scientists at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center are developing a maglev train that could propel their spacecraft skywards. Heading the team is Dr. Ken House. Okay, come on down. Back in the late 90s, NASA uh, sent out a research announcement to uh, invite uh, bids and proposals from uh, scientists 
who had ideas on ways to build a track that would utilize the forces of electricity and magnetism to provide an initial velocity, a, a little bit of a boost, you know, give us some launch assist. One of the advantages of looking at the uh, electric motor uh, maglev concept is the fact that all of the energy required for the initial start from zero velocity up to the 400 mile an hour is provided on the ground. It's been demonstrated and proving that the technology is, is there. It's possible and it's feasible to move large heavy objects at fairly high speeds using simply electricity and the force of magnets, magnetism. The launch system is a fusion of two technologies, using the train and the plane to achieve a common goal. The train won't be going all the way to space, instead it will remain bound to its track as a flying vehicle is catapulted skywards. This is the uh, starting point or the end, end of the motor and uh, in this section would be the levitation and in the center section would be the linear motor. This bed here provides the levitation force or the uplifting against gravity. These sets of coils here provide a stabilizing effect in the side to side direction. Although NASA's models aren't yet ready to fly, they have proved that maglev trains could one day accelerate spaceships to over one and a half thousand kilometers an hour. Running through a tunnel of less dense gas like helium, friction from the air is reduced and the space train would have enough acceleration to launch its payload into orbit. But just how fast can the ultimate train go? The answer may be here at the Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico. If any train deserves the prefix of ultimate, this has to be it. The Air Force's hypersonic upgrade program, or HUP, has taken over five years and $20 million to perfect. At Holloman High Speed Test Track, speed records have regularly tumbled. The last record breaker back in 1982 smashed through Mach 8. Eight times the speed of sound, reaching over 9,800 kilometers an hour. The rail track is used for a variety of military high-speed research programs, from testing ejector seat systems to observing missile ballistics. These are ground-based tests that pave the way for flying prototypes. Most of these trains ran with little more than a mannequin at the helm, but it wasn't always the case. In the 1950s, human guinea pig Colonel John Stapp was regularly accelerated through 40 Gs, suffering broken bones and retinal hemorrhaging in one of the tests. The HUP train is designed to deliver a warhead into its target at the highest possible speed. This train is too brutal for our railways, but the test will provide engineers with valuable hypersonic data. Mission HUP-80X G1 is hours away from launching into history. Dave Minto heads the team.
It'll be very exciting, but we'll also be very nervous because we're doing something that's never been done before. Uh, we'll be venturing into the unknown. New things can happen in physics when you go to where you haven't been. We've done an extensive amount of modeling and simulation to try to make sure that we know exactly what's going to happen. But modeling and simulation is only as good as the physics we know. Uh, so there is an element of the unknown.